like I have a lot of people that come and see the gym now, whether they be trainers or whether they be people from like Ireland, for example, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, like I've always like wanted to do this. They're like, how did you do your paint job? Like who did it for you? And I'm like, me, my little brother, my stepmom, <laughs> and my dad on my hands and knees. On today's podcast, we have Adam Collard. Adam is a fitness expert, a TV personality, a business owner. Um, you've done a lot for being... 23. <laughs> so do you want to just give us like a short intro on where you are from and what you currently are doing with yourself? So I'm from Newcastle, uh, obviously 23 years old and quite a lot of people will know me off the TV. <laughs> and that's sort of like, let's say a bad boy persona that I probably had during that time period. But I think a lot of people obviously haven't really seen my passion sort of come out until after the show. And like getting involved in fitness and everything that I've always wanted to do, wanted to do. Well, that that's the thing. <clears throat> so you are you go on a you go on a TV show and then people know you for that. But you had yeah. a life before it. You know that. How long was the TV show and all together? That well, it was eight weeks and I was on for about six, like or nearly six weeks. So six weeks. And how long before did you know that you were going on that show? Uh, mine was pretty last minute. I think I maybe had like ten to twelve, whereas I think other people had maybe like four, five, even six months notice. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was the last piece of the puzzle that they sort of (laughs) needed. And I think they probably had an idea of just with my personality that it was probably going to work well with the show because I wasn't really bothered. I didn't really have anything to lose. I had a good life before because like work was going well and fitness was going well and I had everything I wanted. So when I went on, I was a little bit more ballsy. I wasn't thinking of the benefits yeah well that's one thing right so a lot of people that are watching this even now won't have realized that you have had your own business even before the show so your business is sculpt fitness so you've you've got you've got your own gym for a start and fitness has been your life for yeah i mean the the, i did loads of different things when i was younger but let's let's start let's go back right so let's go back uh, what was because you're now like a business owner and entrepreneur let's go back to even from school and we'll just go from there because a lot of people that watch this show will be entrepreneurs and they'll want to watch and say how do I do that myself so let's just talk us through so whenever you how was school so if we go from school school I found school really easy like people always think trainers aren't necessarily academic but I breezed it and if anything I was almost a bit like I wasn't bothered because I knew I could pass everything Um, so Jesus he flew through them A levels were a little bit harder but still I didn't really have to try that hard apart from like maybe one set subject which I just didn't get as much but again it was pretty easy and obviously that was the same time where I started going to the gym myself the first time wasn't really in the best shape had a little bit of a hard time in school with like the sense of you wear glasses you're the kid with glasses you're too skinny you're the little kid so, so what was your thing so obviously mine was I was a little bit over I was quite overweight and quite out of shape that was my thing Oh, the overweight kid, okay. little fat remarks, stuff like that. So obviously, went in at the gym. And no, now you're you're like six foot five, are you? Like at least standing yeah. beside you yesterday in Tampa Bar. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty small. <laughs> so what what like did you were you tall as well? Like going through like you got that bit out of shape, slightly yeah. taller, stood out a bit. Yeah, I was always a little bit t- like I was one of the tallest and mm-hmm. looked a little bit older facially, but I still wasn't in shape like. I just didn't have a good physique sort of thing. And like, I think all of my friends were like quite on the trimmer side, could eat what they wanted. Whereas like Mm. me, not really. And, but because I looked a little bit older and was a bit taller, I think I stood out a bit more. So obviously you have a few pop shots of older kids in school who think, oh, well he's big. So maybe I'll have, but I was quiet as a mouse at that point. And (laughs) then the gym and everything sort of between the ages of like 16 to 18 was the big change. Like those two years solid. I think I built a lot of confidence in myself, but also that was when I caught the bug for fitness and that was where I learned like a hell of a lot. Okay. I remember like going home every night and sort of like reading like the bodybuilding.com, reading like Muscle Nation, like following YouTubers for the first time and like just sort of learning like that. I wasn't bothered about anything else. I just caught the bug and thought I'm going to try and learn as much as possible. So you were you were academic like you got good results and stuff yeah. and did you ever have another career path in mind or what when did it actually sink in that you're like no fitness is going to be actually my life so my dad hated the fact that i was into the fitness side no he liked the fact that i was in the fitness side personally but when i told him i was going to pt and stuff like that 
he was like, absolutely, categorically not. There's no money in it. It's totally stupid. Didn't see, there was no Gymshark then. There was no YouTubers that were making millions. He was just like, are you stupid? Like, stupid people are trainers. That's what they do because they haven't got grades. So let's, I'll rewind it back a little (laughs) bit. I was from, I was in retail. I worked like waiter's jobs. I was in account, I did like accountancy for a little bit. I worked in an office. I was a scaffolder for a little bit. I was a joiner for a little bit. Loads of different things like construction, like then academic with maths and accountancy sort of thing, like just getting a little insight into it. Then I was going to go, well, I actually did go to Leeds Uni to do business marketing or to do quantity surveying. Totally could not think of anything worse to do (laughs) now being the person that I am. But because that was the done thing and I was academic and obviously my dad was like sort of, well, it's a hundred grand job. Yeah, you can get into it dead easily. I've got the contacts. You're clever, much more academic than he was. He was like, that's what you're doing. And I think because he left school at such a young age, it was almost like you're going to be academic. Whereas in the meantime of this happening, 16 to 18, I remember like towards the 18 mark, I was training and like people were starting to see the changes in me and stuff like that. And I remember I actually flunked graphics which was one of my a-levels but i never did it well like it was my only thing that wasn't an a and i just didn't get it so i just decided right well i'm just going to sneak out of school and train more so what happened was the first ever experience that i had had no insurance had no pt qualifications the only thing i had was i read muscle nation and watch youtube every night (laughs) these two businessmen that were about mid 40s came up to us in the gym and they were like oh like you're in here like i normally only see you after school or sixth form and i was like oh i've got a free hour they were like, oh, well, we'll pay you, like, we'll pay you both of us to just come and train us, like, two, three times a week. They were like, we always just take this off because we've got our own businesses and we'll come out. So that was the first sign of money that I ever saw. And I was like, right, so I'm working. It can f- actually be profit. This yeah. can this can be profitable. Yeah. Yeah, That that's the thing. Like, I, I you know, it, I've spoke about before. I used to be a refrigeration engineer for 13 years. But, like, in the houses, doing loads and loads of different things. And I worked in retail and all those those things. But you sort of, what I found with me as well, like, I'd done all those jobs quite young. And you sort of find out quite quickly what you don't want to do. Right? I don't want to work in a clothes shop. Right? I don't want to work in finance. I don't want to yeah. work in this. So, like, what I think now is good is, like, eliminating, like, what you don't want to do. So it starts getting a lot of stuff out of the way. And the thing that you're meant to be doing becomes more and more prominent and more and more clear. You know, so that seemed to be happening with you and the clues, you like, you listen to the clues all around and these guys coming up and saying, let's train us. So you'd got your first clients essentially. So I'd got my first clients, totally no qualifications. And I was thinking like, I was working in that like Hollister sort of shop in town as a, like just a sales assistant really. And I was thinking I'm getting like six pound an hour because that's what the wage is in Newcastle, minimum wage, whatever. I was getting six pound an hour and then I was training these guys three times a week and I think they were giving us like 40, 50 pound cash. And I was thinking, I'm doing three hours work and like, I don't need to do the other thing. And then I was thinking, well, I've got a couple more free hours. Maybe I should actually look into this. Anyway, still sort of to and fro and with the idea. And then my, to be honest, my dad will admit this. It's the only thing he's ever admitted. And he was like, totally no. So I went to uni to Leeds, do business marketing as the plan was. Went there for four, five, six weeks, four, five, six weeks, something like that. <laughs> and then I was like, nah. I hate it. I hate everything. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I remember like seeing a couple of YouTube videos of people who were like doing what I wanted to do. Mm. And then I remember one day just being like, I'm going to leave. I don't care how much money it's going to sort of like I've lost with like university loans and stuff like that. I was just like, I'm going to go back, do a PT course and just commit full time. So you got like the the University of Google, the University of YouTube now, that's where everybody's learning. Yeah. You know, and that that's essentially what we do this podcast for and what we do everything for is because we sort of show and teach what isn't really taught in schools, you know, like what, apart from doing your, fina- the finance one would have been good, you know, whenever you're working because you can manage money and things yeah. like that. There is things that you can pick up that are great, but I think like getting out and setting up a business and becoming self-employed it's something that's not really pushed enough in schools i don't think it's something that's not really spoke about everybody's saying go get your hundred grand a year job go set yourself up for life but they don't realize some people can do that in a month you know with with the right kind of um business model and the right kind of structure in place you can do that quite rapidly so you so at this point right so you're pt in um you've got a pt and when what what happened next then? Did you get a job in a gym or where did you work? So I went from Leeds University. I went back home 
to Newcastle and I did a weekend course to get a PT degree in Northumbria University. Uh, Northumbria University. It's like a foundation degree. It's like under a bachelor's. Um, did a couple of extra courses just on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, nine till five. So that, I got that qualification within five months. And in the meantime, I was working on my dad's construction company Monday to Friday. So I was still earning money the worst 10, 12 hours of, <laughs> like I was thinking I'm just a monkey. Like, obviously it was my dad's business and I hated telling people that because I hated them thinking like, like especially like- You weren't qualified blo- yeah, to be there? Blokey you were just blokes, like, yeah. yeah. But basically I was lifting scaffolding tubes, putting them up, chucking them to people who were actually qualified to do it. And I did that for four or five months while doing the PT course on the weekend. But- Well, it yeah. allowed you to do it. That's the thing, like you have to sort of, you have to do what you got to do to get yourself into a position where you have to eat at the end of the day, you have to feed yourself. So you were getting money and then you were training to be what you wanted to be. So you talked about like YouTubers and you talked about different things. All this time you were watching YouTube people in all the way through, I take it? Yeah, I mean, every night religiously. This PT course, it's a piece of paper. Like, don't get us wrong. There is some stuff that like very, very little that you learn, but... You just need the qualification. Your learning definitely comes after or in your own time because I know loads of PTs that have a PT qualification, but they have an abysmal amount of knowledge when it comes to actually training and the people on YouTube and reading stuff and actually taking the time to learn from experience or learn from better people was so much better. Like I got put around people who knew what they were doing and that is where I learned everything. It wasn't this qualification, this piece of paper, like the, the biology and the physiology side of the course was GCSE level. I'd already got an A at A level biology, so like I knew it all. And then the training side of it, it was so basic on that course. It was, I could have passed it blindfolded, to be honest, without trying to sound cocky saying that, but proper training protocols I learned from people who I actually respected in the industry, on YouTube, on blogs, on stuff like that. And that is where I got to where. yourself. Yeah. So I'm sure like you were training the whole way through this as well. Yeah. But just before we fly on from that. So everything, this one thing I say as well, like you, you never like, you never get something from everything that you've learned, you know? So obviously you like, even though you were doing a level at physics or whatever it was that adapted into your new life, the, the fitness life at yeah. some point, you didn't even realize at the time you were yeah. thinking, how, where are we going to use this or what's going to happen? And turned out being like, you were able to be a more efficient and better, you know, yeah. PT. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I'm glad I did the biology side of it, but at the same time, you can honestly learn so much just online nowadays. It's crazy. Everyone has the tools, and to be honest, that's why going into the business now, where I'm at, obviously, I've got the gym, and that's great. But obviously, online coaching and stuff like that, there are yeah. real people. There's there's some terrible advice out there, but they're all also really really intelligent people that are putting tremendous content out there well we'll come back to that yeah. right we'll go into that in another yeah. point so at this point you're like right you're you've got your pt qualification what what point did you tell your dad right i'm out of here i'm i'm going to work in a gym or what happened next i i he knew that was the plan at that point once i'd left university that was the day where it sunk in and it was i think i almost got a bit like stubborn and i was like i don't care what anyone says now i know what i'm going to do yeah. Um. Something clicked in my head, and it might have been like watching some video or something like motivational, and I couldn't care less if it was my dad, my mom, anyone. I was like, "This is what I'm gonna do. Either accept it." I I was on a mission to get prove everyone wrong. Or yeah. You either yeah. for us or you're against yeah. us. That's it. You have to get on that board was it. here. You know. And also the motivation and the driving factor was I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna make yeah. more money. I'm gonna make more money than that job you wanted us to do, and then I'm gonna tell you. And then you're going to tell us. And it's the only I, time I've probably ever been right against one. No, I, I'm, I'm the same as that as well. Like, I think there is an element just of drive whenever you just sort of want to prove somebody wrong, you know, or prove that you can do something really, really well. Because I probably, like yourself, have like real good self belief. I'm good at talking to myself and saying, no, this, I know this is the right thing. My gut feeling is telling me this is the way to do it. So let's just go. So at that point, then you were working in a gym, first of all? No, so finish my PT what are you course. At this point? I'm 19. 19. Just, just to nineteen. So there's nineteen-year-old PTs out there that have actually went against the odds, didn't go to college, and they're training in gyms yeah. right now. So that's this is yeah, it's definitely of. relatable. And I actually got quite lucky because just as I had passed, there was a gym in an area called Gosworth, which is a quite well-to-do area. I don't live there, but it's quite well well-to-do area in Newcastle. Now this big gym opened. There was twelve trainers, fresh. 
Um, some had PT before, some hadn't, me being one of them. And with all due respect, I went in and because I was so obsessed, passionate, everything like that, had learned everything in the last two years, I absolutely cleaned up. I went from I went from pretty much getting like, I don't know, like 100, 200 pound a week for doing like 60 hours on a horrible construction site to I was earning a fortune for 19. Like I remember actually being ridiculously stupid with money because I was like, this is so easy. You didn't know the value of no, it because you'd so much of the, it at the time? Didn't yeah. know, for, for a 19 year old coming out of that. And I remember my friends, I was earning more in a day than they were getting in a week. And just off, don't get us wrong, I was working 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day some days, but yeah. once I saw the money signs, there was two things that motivated me, helping people in fitness yeah. and the money factor. Yeah. Like both of those things People were, are afraid to yeah. talk about like being motivated by money. Why not? You yeah. know what I mean? Like you have to, again, what I said is like pay your bills. It's a good benchmark to the knowledge that you put into it and you do deserve to be paid. You know yeah. what I mean? You do deserve to be paid well for like putting in all that time and putting in the hours and watching the vlogs and blogs and everything like that and educating yourself. The way I look at it now is like how much value you add into someone. You yeah. know, you know that you're changing someone's life. Yeah, well, all these people in in that area had a lot of disposable income and obviously I knew what my dad was paying me for the week at that time. And obviously I walked in on Monday morning, half five until half nine. I was like, I've earned more than what you paid me. Mm. I can go to bed now for the rest of the week if I wanted to. <laughs> obviously I wasn't. I, like then I, then I really thought I can actually start putting things into place now. And then obviously that was a public gym. It was a commercial. It was actually the gym, the gym, the gym group, which is all okay. over England. Okay. In Ireland, you've got like Fit for Less or something like that. Um, we've got Fit for Less and we've also got Fly Fit. Fly Fit, yeah. Um, and then you've got, um, yeah, this, uh, the energy So fitness. one of them gyms yeah, yeah, yeah. cleaned up. There was 12 trainers there. I would say there was, there was three that knew how to train. Okay. Three or four, like with all due respect, like I would only get, to, I would only let my family members train with about three of those 12. So we just cleaned up as okay. soon as this gym opened. Um, and obviously, then after that, the next thing was, I was like, well, hold on. I'll go through a few months of like blowing my money and like spending it a little bit and being a 19 year old stupid kid. Like I think I went to America for like six weeks because I could and I didn't need to. Yeah. And <laughs> apart, apart from that, like it, it was just cool. I was going out a lot. But then after that, once I'd sort of like done it a little bit, I was like, well, hold on. Now I could actually maybe start thinking about saving up and actually opening my gym. Like at 19 then, so you you thought, right, okay, I'm thinking about opening my own business here. Yeah. Like that's so, for a 19 year old watching this right now, who actually is into fitness and is doing this, it is achievable, you've proved it. Yeah. So at that point, then you were coming 19, 20 at that point, and you're like, right, okay, I want to open my own gym. Yeah. What was your next stage? Like, what was your thought? Like, what was your, what, was your, what happened next? Um. So there was a gym... So the gym group, the way it worked as a commercial gym is you can either do 12 hours for free working, like cleaning the gym, giving people random bits of advice, just walk around the gym and look like you work there for 12 hours. So you've got no outgoings at all. So ideal for someone first starting. So I did that and probably PT'd about 45 hours on top of that. Wow. Um, but I was self-employed. It was all mine, no cut, nothing like that. Yeah. So after that point, obviously saving up everything and starting to get into it. I also started doing outside of that gym, a female only edgy boot camp with one of my friends who was also in that gym. We were two of the people that like, we actually knew how to train people. So on a Saturday, we actually started that. Now in the meantime of that, there was a gym that was well known around Newcastle. It was a private facility um, that aesthetically looked like the place to be. It was the best looking gym in Newcastle. Not really the best looking, but the trainers there did YouTube. They were very professional, they were hardcore. And they, one of the guys who owned that, who was part owner, who was part owner came and found me and was like, look, like you are gonna stop paying rent, but like this is the place to be. So that was the next step. I actually went into a private facility yeah. and started PT and, and charging a little bit more because I could, because it was not open to the public. Like you come there, you get your PT session or your small group session and then you go. Yeah, cool. And at what stage did you think that it was going to be, I'm going to own my own gym? Like why, how did you think that? Like it seems like such a massive undertaking. Do you know what I mean? Like opening a gym, like you, you already were aware of like the outgoings with the electricity, insurance. Like did you just, was it just like a wild idea that you had and it just, how did it come about or so this 
private facility that I went to next had the best of the best in. We were all very, very good trainers in Newcastle. And we also had like, we were quite well known is in the sense of like word of mouth and stuff like that. It was almost a place to go. There was like me, three other boys and one girl who trained there. And it was sort of like, it was known as like the hardcore, like Pete, not hardcore, but like we had the knowledge, like everyone was switched on there. However, the two business owners that owned that, one more than the other, sort of ran it into the ground gradually. It was like, so I went there with a lot of PT hours and I lost a few taking the risk to go over. But then it got to the point where I was looking around and I was thinking, right, so I'm 20 years old at this point. I'm doing these hours. I was looking around thinking like, she's a really good trainer. I'm still doing more more hours than her. More people are choosing me. She's 27. Then I was looking at the other two guys that owned the business thinking like, right, they are very good trainers. They're doing nothing. And I'm still doing the most. So I was bringing in the most money at 20 and they were 27 to 28 years old. All the trainers. So they all had seven or eight years on me. Mm. And they're really good trainers. Yeah. Um, however, like the just the motivation and maybe the way they talk to people and like the way they approach clients and stuff, it was never as good as me, even from twenty. I was thinking like business wise, like I was always doing the most numbers. So how how did you get that though? So clients came back to you, like where did you put the value into making sure they were in the best shape? Or did you just like we good at sales? Like, you know, how do you how are we getting one thing with bank house that we always do in bank house media my digital agency is like client retention you know yeah. we always want the clients come back and we always want them shouting from the rooftops how how good we were and how good the service was like what was your sort of ethos at that time or what did you think you've when you've got clients and they're paying you that much money you've got to make you've got to be everything that hour should be the best hour of their day mm-hmm. in some way shape or form Julia, who owns the who owns five hair salons that is not bothered about paying fifty pounds an hour to PT with you. She wants to talk about her dogs in between squats, you talk about her dogs. She wants to lose five pounds, you talk about five pounds. She doesn't want to be able to snatch 120 kilos like me and get it above my head. She doesn't know if that's good or bad. She wants to lose five pounds and feel good in a bikini. So take away your selfish mindset of like, oh, that's my goal and I want to be able to do handstand push-ups because <laughs> she doesn't want to do that. Yeah. But guess what? They're the type of people that are going to pay you money because it's likely that the people who actually are interested in your stuff, they're also trainers yeah. and they're never going to pay you or they're also people that don't need actual help. Yeah. So I always could turn my hand to the client. You put in an 80-year-old woman, I'll teach her how to get off a chair better. You put in a young lad that wants to build muscle, I'll be his best friend. And that was what people didn't really get. And that's always something that I tell people when they're always like, how do you get clients? And I'm like, take away your personality. You've not got a personality. Whoever is in your hour, that's your new personality. Okay, Okay. get your head around that and that's how you'll bring in clients. So from this point, obviously being in that gym around those people, the business was running into the ground, but I was still sky high. And it got to the point where it was like, it was dusty. The equipment was all messed up. Like there was arguments going on in the office, which between the two part owners, which I could see. And I was like PT and people downstairs. And I was thinking, oh, they're just arguing about training <laughs> or something like that. It was going terribly. Now, the funny thing about this is I'm like 21, t- going on 22 at this point, like just about to turn 22, I think. Now I'm, I'm 21 years old. Now I actually went to another gym which was a Reebok official CrossFit gym because I heard during this time period that this business was going to go bust that I was working in. So I actually took on another gym and I was going between the two. Did they know this? Did the boss know that? Yeah, yeah, they knew. I said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to take on another gym. So I had a safety net. I went between this commercial gym that was owned by Reebok and it was amazing. And I met some really good people that were in a CrossFit and helped me loads, great people. But I knew it was a safety net. I went between there and I went back to the old unit which had those trainers in. So during this point, me being me and me knowing there was gonna, something was gonna happen soon. Soon as this business closed down, I took the unit on. So that is actually sculpt. So the unit that went bust and the trashy sort of terrible gym which was covered in dust and there was like shit all over the floor for want of a better word, like it was terrible but like the trainers were great. So around the back end, I went to another gym, let the, let the business go bust and then mm-hmm. took the unit back and then 
completely ripped it back open, as in like took everything out and started from scratch and put brilliant. a second floor on. That's brilliant, yeah. So, so, so you put a second floor and all in, then kitted out your gym. So yeah. Sculpt was born then, essentially? So Sculpt was born. Obviously, Sculpt was obviously always the name that I was going for. Like Even from 18 years old, I always knew that was the name. And when I was in that commercial gym, you actually had to have a name because all 12 of the trainers were self-employed. So on my business cards, I had Sculpt by Adam Collard. Yeah, yeah. So I always had that name. I owned the domain and stuff like that. So and how, I always how much thought, is like goal setting like in this whole thing? So we're all about mindset, obviously. We're yeah. all about like goal setting, taking action, writing down your, writing down your goals, visualizing, you know, asking for help like all of these different aspects that we've worked on with um in the evolution of success that our documentary like all of the 12 steps gone through there like you know were you big into that did you visualize did you constantly like vis live in your imagination or which way did you do it so even back from the commercial gym where i started obviously seeing seeing the money signs so to speak the business goal that me and me and the guy that set up that female only boot camp we always used to banter each other and it was it was good really but we always used to say oh how many hours you got this week and like the magic number was always 40 hours because we knew how much that was and he was like it was always like it was almost like the chase to be like have you hit 40 hours yet every week and obviously i was the first person i think to hit that 40 hour mark and then once we both got there we both helped each other loads yeah we almost like it sounds really bad we almost like looked not down on the other trainers <laughs> but we sort of went like we're 40 plus hours let's never ever let this drop and yeah. it was almost like a goal setting of being like right every every week on a friday would be like did you did you make 40 we'd be like yeah did you make 40 and if it that, was if we ever didn't like, yeah that was when we'd be like right why with me and my business partner so we are like accountability partners do you yeah. know what i mean so he has full permission to check in and be like where are you at with this yeah. i have full permission to go like where like so I will say like what's your week look like and i'll say no i need you to write down for me exactly what you're sort of planning on doing so i can check in and be like did you hit that and he can do exactly the same with me having an accountability partner moves businesses forward at rapid pace i'm telling you now we have moved forward since me and daniel started working together we have achieved so much our team has more than doubled tripled and we've just powered through it like it's see having an accountability partner which you and your friend were doing yeah. just without even realizing what it was yeah it's just it it does drive you like and it does sort of keep you motivated all the time i think that people people need to do that you know and people need to you know talk to people that the trust and people that know they've got their they're aligned with the same sort of values of them and also want to you know the same kind of thing you know because so where, where is he now essentially is he still PTAing or what's he up to um he's actually in spain and to be honest we're pretty distant now okay, um yeah. he pt for a while Good, good businessman, a lot older than me, uh, probably didn't have as much lifespan in the business because I think it's something that you have to like start young to really get obviously mm -hmm. your own facility. Like people always think, say well, like, like you I shouldn't think, be I young. I think everybody moves into different situations as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I've been through five, six different lives before I've got to this one, you know? And like my best friend, we done exactly the same in school. He ended up, he's got now an electrical company and they've got like five or six or seven vans on the road i don't even know he we bought houses at the same time i lost mine in the recession he continued continued to buy them he's got mm -hmm. like probably about five more houses now and you know but and whenever we, we met up at a wedding about two weeks ago and we were able to like slot right back into it but it's hard for us to keep accountable to each other now because we're we're pulled apart you know in our yeah. businesses but fundamentally that type of stuff stays you know so it is, it's quite it's normal for people to like drift but um it always it is good to have whatever stage you're at it's good to have sort of someone at that stage that you can use that you, whether it's a partner or a business partner or whatever it ends up being but um so at this point right you're like right okay so you've ended up you've hit 22 you've got this gym and you've now opened the doors of your own gym that's that's insane yeah so it was a bit it was a bit tricky. I'll just this go is back all, can a little. Just remember, like before Love Island. Yeah, so yeah everybody, this is all before so Love Island. So most of, most of the UK and Ireland, like we've spent the past two or, two or three days in Dublin together, and you know it's hard to get across the street without someone asking you for a photograph. Yeah, it's hard to even get through a meal, get through a gym session, get through anything at all without getting a photograph. So a lot of people know a version of you right now, but the, a lot of people will be shocked, I think, to hear like how driven and how working you've been like before this other thing <coughs> happens. You know? Yeah, I mean. It's funny, like, I've got, from from my past relationships, especially, like, 
there's one girl who I lived with for like a year and she was probably the only girl that I would say that I was like really dead serious with. Mm -hmm. And she lived with me up from the whole drama of like the gym shutting down, that one that I worked at, mm -hmm. me going to the other place and round the back getting my facility now. And she like, to be honest, the relationship and stuff like that was all, quite a lot of it was because I was so single minded in getting that, getting to that goal that yeah. I did not care about anything else. Like I was like, I, did, I didn't sleep if something wasn't done. It, I didn't like everything, all of my, like I was consumed by it. I was like, yeah. that is what I'm gonna do. And then, so you ended up, right, so you've got, um you got the gym opened and then you've got, what did you do then for marketing at this point? Then you were like, right, I need to get people in. Had you people in first week then? You had all your clients, you were just able to just so them in? when it first opened, it was just me by myself. But obviously because I had this big facility myself, it was the first time I could do whatever I wanted. So I had all my PT clients, which my one-to-ones. However, I'd never done semi-private groups, which were little small group PT sessions, obviously six to eight people maximize the income straight away you you're making a lot more money now this was the first structure that i did for the business so you had to come in three times a week you had set sessions it was like before and afters basically eight weeks get shredded get in shape people jumped on it straight away so first time i was doing it i was quite well known for being a pt as in one-to-one -one, but some people can't afford pt but they still want to train three times per week it's small small group training sessions are so popular now yeah like every i think they're brilliant you know it's great I don't train, but uh, I think <laughs> for anybody who does, I think they're very uh, cost effective. You know, I think it is great. Yeah, um, like, it's again, going back to like the best hour of your day with your clients, like those guys almost had a bit of a cult. Like it was like, the, I got to the point where I was doing five or six of these semi-private groups, which was so much more money than what PT was doing. But also at the same time, I was building a community where mm -hmm. people were coming in. They were sitting upstairs without me in the lounge area of the gym what like to be honest used to just be an office and they were almost like bantering each other and it was starting to build and it was starting to build and then the next thing was actually trying to get staff in so other pts for me to manage for the first time Brilliant. um the way the gym was built and the way i like i have a lot of people that come and see the gym now whether they be trainers or whether they be people from like ireland for example a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and they're like oh like i've always like wanted to do this they're like how did you do your paint job like who did it for you and i'm like me, my little brother, my stepmom, <laughs> and my dad on my hands and knees. And they're like, oh, how did you get them neon lights? And we went, B and Q, built them myself. Yeah. And they're like, what, like all of this? And I was just <laughs> cowboy, cowboy gyms, cowboy yeah. gyms. So everything was built. Like we'll have those really pretty neon lights, all of the colors. I was like really strict on making it. I wanted an Instagrammable gym because I knew the value of social media. Oh yeah. So right, that this now you've got like over a million followers on Instagram, you yeah. know, um, and you're it's growing constantly, and and your business now is growing, and all your life has took many different paths. So you ended up in Love Island, right? We got the Love yeah. Island stage. Did you whenever you got the call for it, or whenever you can fill us in and tell us how that happened? But did did you say right? Okay, this is this is like an opportunity for me to like grow my brand, grow my business, and do probably another goal that you'd set by accident somewhere. <laughs> Love, like, I was not stupid. Love Island was never Love Island for me. I would have went in there and I'm quite, I have a habit of being center of attention sometimes. I'll hold my hands up, whether it be good or whether it be bad. I think it can be a bit of both in certain situations, but I knew how to keep the camera on me. But Love Island wasn't Love Island to me. It was Instagram Island. I knew yeah. exactly that the gym would thrive off it and I knew there'd be a lot more opportunities coming off the back of it. Like, I don't just want sculpt, well, I want... It's free, it's free more advertising. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're getting in front of the nation for, you know, six, seven weeks, as you say, and, and you're, everything else is growing on the back end of it, you know? And that's the thing. So so you end up in Love Island and then you ended up, like, having various different relationships on there. It was, it was good fun to watch. I actually <laughs> watched it at the time. It was hilarious. But um, so whenever you came out of it then, it was, you had a roller coaster then. At any point, actually, whenever you're in Love Island, were you thinking, oh, my God, I hope my gym's all right? I hope... I Every hope, yeah. day. Did Every you, yeah? day without fail. So when I was in Love Island, I had two trainers that I'm quite good friends with. Um, and they were the only two that I have in the gym now. Obviously now I have seven, but at mm -hmm. that point I only had two trainers. And I was thinking and praying that everything was okay on the outside. All my clients were fine. I couldn't have, like, it was a massive risk for me. And at this point, um, 
one thing to touch on. I did borrow a little bit of money off my dad to finish the gym. Yeah. Um, so that, that's I knew... Okay. It's, like a, it's like a business. Yeah. Run. And if you can get that family, that's great. Yeah, like know? I needed a little bit to get us over the hump of like putting some of the kit in. And obviously from, honestly, within a week of coming out of Love Island, it was all paid off. And I knew exactly, once I came out and realized like how easy that was to come about and all of the other things, like all of my PA money and stuff like that yeah. got pumped straight back into the fitness, straight back into the dream, straight back into assets. the gym. Yeah, it was building you could have been, you could, that That's the thing that whenever even we have our own, we, we do like B, B2B and B2C. So we have business to business, which is very much service and clients, but we are constantly building assets ourselves that we're yeah. selling um, to consumers, you know, digital products, um, and different things like that. So the, me and Daniel know the value in that like massively, you know, and we've always been doing it. So we've always we've always seen the power in like reinvesting. We don't have a problem in spending. Like we were out in LA for a month there and I spent more money in one month in LA than what I earned in my whole first year in business. Like genuinely, I yeah. spent that like in, in June of this year and or May of this year. And But that is all invested into like our next business that we're launching, you know, so. Yeah you get it back you get you get it 10 times back you know so it's actually in a really good place so you were taking all of your money like reinvesting into your gyms and then where people didn't really know that, that this is they just thought you were like party boy out doing these public appearances out doing different things so what what how did you sort of deal with that well obviously again like after love island i was still getting pulled all over the place like different nightclub every night to do an appearance but again money to go back in the business but i was getting pulled all over i was doing events for love island i was doing talk shows and also trying to manage a girl who i was with at the time mm -hmm. um and yeah like it was a bit of a change of direction but what people didn't see is every day whether i be in a gym in brighton in liverpool in manchester wherever i was filming videos every day with just me and my canon g7x building a database of all the exercises and in the meantime building the academy which is like the online app and basically building all of the content for the next year because i knew that as soon as these peers run out or at least die down a little bit i'm going to drop the hammer like that's what i want to do sculpt flying sculpt fine yes i was a little bit sentimental and i used to stress about it everywhere i was in the country and be like i hope it's okay <laughs> but apart from that i was thinking a sculpt is going to go online that's the next step yeah. so during any place i was i used to find the coolest gym i could film videos on my iphone film videos on my canon and just think this is the next step this is where it's going to go yeah god that's brilliant the power of social media like come on it's it's insane now even i follow sculpt as well um and you can see how the, even your trainers there have built tribes all over the place you know so i'm sure like whenever you were floating around and you were driving some traffic from your own social media you'd grown to like whenever you came out of love island you'd hit like hundreds of thousands of followers had you yeah i remember um you actually go down in a lock lock a lockdown villa after the real villa when you come out because obviously everything's aired 24 hours after okay so for example i get knocked out on a thursday you won't see it till friday night and i actually one of the security guards this is really cheeky but he left his phone unlocked on the side of the balcony or something, the, the villa we were staying in. And his sole job was to chaperone me until I got back into England. And he left it unlocked. And I remember going on his Instagram and searching my name. And it was on like 550,000 followers. Now, I was gobsmacked at that because I was like, that's me sorted. Now, <laughs> by time, by time I'd flew back into England and they gave me the, because they have like a sealed security envelope with your phone in opened my phone and in 24 hours i gained another 250,000 followers yeah that's like more than people have after like growing the business for years like it was yeah. on set it was on 550 and i remember flying back to england and in 24 hours it was on 740 so at, the, at this point then you're like you're you're like at this point you're 23 you understand the value or 22 or 23 and you understand the value in having like this amount of followers with paid um, sponsored posts driving traffic into your gym raising awareness for whatever you believe in you basically you can you have a massive social influence now was this like d whenever you got the call for love island did you just think that's it i know exactly what i'm going to do here no um i had a massive massive fight with my dad and my stepmom because they had helped with the gym and i still had a bit of outstanding money and i was earning very good money in the gym and at the time like I think they didn't understand like what Love Island was because they'd never watched it. To be honest, I hadn't watched that much of it, but <laughs> I, but I knew the value of it, whereas yeah. they didn't know the value of it. So I'm earning like very good money in the gym. I've now got my first two trainers in the gym to be seven soon. 
Um, and then at this point, they were like, why do you need this? You're earning great money. And I was thinking, you don't understand. Like, this is the one. This is almost like the, it's your golden ticket to make an everything franchisable, everything like go global, everything like go online. And I knew that the online stuff, because I'd seen people who on YouTube that I'd been following with great big followings on Instagram and YouTube, I knew that was an easy way to get to the top rather than me potentially having to take three years of like, to get to that one million followers and maybe yeah. not even being able to do it even at that three year so point. So many people can't do it in ten years. Do yeah. you know what I mean? It's like it, it is great. The thing is, like if you if you constantly go back to whatever you set out your goals to be, right? I want to get people fit. I want to make sure people are in good shape. I want to make sure people are you know they feel good about themselves. Whatever your goals were, whenever you're standing in a room with um a, somebody who you're potentially coming on with to train. If you still keep that and keep that as what your goal goal is, and you know that you can now do it on a much much wider scale and a much much broader scale, you know, especially with the digital product, especially with all of these different things that, that you've got, you know, coming out at the minute and and are constantly going to build. Especially, you know, whenever I you know, whenever I started uh, working with you, or whatever we do work together, um, <laughs> whenever I started working with you, I was just like completely taken aback because. Whenever I first had seen you on Love Island, I didn't know any of this stuff. And whenever you had actually voice memoed over your bio, which whenever I was listening to it, I was so impressed. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, holy fuck, he's done like so much stuff in the past, you know, X amount of years of his life. And I was like really, really impressed. And that's why I thought, right, okay, I'm going to really enjoy working with this guy because the drive's there, the work ethic's there, and also the, the talent is there, you know? And it is like, forget about, you know, whatever people's perception is of whenever you're... Um, coming out of a show or like breaking up with somebody or doing whatever yeah. that's all that's all real life it's just it's just at that period of those six weeks it was broadcast to the nation you know mm. but like i think if you stick with the ethos and what you actually the reason why you set this out you can now bring it to a, ma a major scale i know what's ahead like i i know what's about to come out with digital products i know what's going to happen with your gym over the next few years and i'm really excited like you know so what if you just want to explain then what is happening and what is next or what you're excited about now most so Next is obviously, there's been a few different avenues, let's say, with the online in the sense of like, how can I bring out something to hit everybody? How can I bring out like a product? How can I bring out some sort of like database, something to help everything that I've done with people? I mean, you should see my iPhone camera roll with the transformations that I've done in the gym. But these are only people in Newcastle. Like, I don't want to just do Newcastle. I want to do everywhere in England. I want to do everywhere abroad. I want to do the full world. Anyone that thinks that anyone that's willing to apply the knowledge that I can give them in the sense of, I'll make the plan, you just give me a little bit of effort. Like I want to hit as many people and help as many people as possible because and you is, know what? Is that possible? So ta talk us through how that is possible. I believe that it is, I know that yeah. it is, but like a lot of people will say, how can you train me online? Because you know, a lot of people aren't really, don't get it, you know what I mean? They don't get like an online trainer. One, I think it's so much more cost effective. Do you know what I mean? Because PTN is just... You have some massive benefits. Obviously, it's much more cost effective now. There's no time constraints as in the sense of you don't have to be there for a set PT hour, whereas life happens sometimes. Your kids, I don't know, they take ill or something happens with your job. You can't make a PT session at that time, but you can always train at a different time with your program. But also how good social media and platforms are these days my YouTube videos, I do as much as what I'm doing in a PT session one-to-one. -one. Like I choose now not to actually coach people in person because I actually think my time is much more valuable trying to give a one-to-one -one approach on a video. And that's what now I think I'm really good at. And all of the basics work. There is a lot of bullshit and a lot of fads that are out there right now. I mean, me personally with a million whatever followers on Instagram, I get companies asking me all the time, trying to pay the most money out of any of my paid partnerships to basically promote some sort of crappy juice diet, some sort of fad, some Skinny sort tees. of like, that some sort of vibrating belt that's gonna get yeah. your abs. It doesn't, it doesn't work. What works is the basics and it always has, but now there's a lot more science behind it. So you get an, an ebook, which is what I'm gonna bring out and it's gonna be the best one on the market. That is what's gonna get you from point A to point B and everybody can follow it. It just needs a bit more explanation and yeah. that's what the videos are for. I, I haven't been to the gym since 2014, um, which I'm <laughs> I keep threatening to get back into it. But that's what, part of the contract. That's part of I'm <laughs> going to do it. Yeah, six pack central. I'm going to be a transformation. But what I but I obviously got invited into all of your private groups um, because I wanted to see what was going on. I wanted to see what uh, value you were offering. 
I could not believe how much value was being offered um, in the private groups because I've worked with other people in the fitness space and other companies have approached us and asked us to build out their um, private members areas. They've asked us to build out um, their platforms, everything, you know, and I looked at what they were offering. Nowhere near as much as what you even offer in your sculpt um, private, your gym private m member. And I know you've got three, yeah. you know, so and I know you're doing it across all of them. I could not believe the work ethic and the amount of stuff that you were putting in because I thought he's cleaning up with personal appearances, um, Instagram posts, all of these things. Like, cause this is the this is the sad thing that I think is happening now with Instagram. People think it's easy, you know. You just you get like a hundred thousand followers, a million followers, and you just get paid to p promote things. Mm. But I feel that's going to die off. Like in a way, are you people are you can only post so much. Like you need to have something else. You need to have a, a really good work ethic. Or what's what's your opinion on that? you you get out what you put in like there's a reason why my posts are worth more and more frequent than other people's i invested in a good camera i make sure that i will go somewhere to make sure the content's better is in the background the backdrop stuff like that the quality's better you're actually trying to like make the product look good and yeah. not that it needs to look good but better than what it is like it, it you put in more effort though, in anything it, yeah it needs to look like a catalog you know it needs to look like yeah. a magazine like if you are willing to step your game up and put more effort into that, all of, whether it be personal appearances, paid posts, whatever it is, the online eBooks and stuff like that, it will get better. What do yeah. you think about people that are out there and they're making a few quid off um, social influencing, but that's their only form of revenue? Well, it's a massive risk because if you don't have anything in play, if that goes down for a month, even if Instagram goes down for a month and it takes them so long to like whatever sort the problem out you're done for a month like yeah i can guarantee that if instagram goes down for a month i'll not be done because of everything else that i've set in place with the gym and stuff like that i can go to work tomorrow even yeah. at the very very like worst case scenario i know that i can still go back and pt exactly the same standard as what i did before never mind still being able to do online coaching still being able to you know like because have things set thing, in like place you know, what we are focusing on with you is like definitely like your website, your landing pages, your sales funnels, like using ClickBank, using various different tools out there like Google AdWords, Facebook, YouTube, you know, you do have to be hidden from all different angles. You know, that's that's what I have worry about. You know, people used to think we don't need a website um, because Facebook was kind of like a website. Yeah. You no, know, Facebook operated like a shop. We're now like websites, we've just seen an absolute influx of just getting more and more into the business. And that's because people are now starting to look at them again, thinking Facebook's kind of died off. My business has been on Facebook for like three, four years and our sales are down because <coughs> algorithms me. change. Our people just aren't doing it. Facebook want you to put more money into advertising spend. So they're dying down. So there's all different ways of doing it, like pay-per-click with um, Google AdWords and having an understanding of that. One thing as well, since we've been working together, I've been really impressed by the amount of like knowledge you, you had in that and also the want of no learning more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is one thing that I've really been been great because I, I love like working with people who want to do more. Like we only work with people who are either leaders in their fields or want to be. That's mm. it. Anything other than that is just far too hard. If we're working with a company that does not want to be a leader in their field, I'm thinking, why are you doing it then? What what is the, what is the point? You just want to like you know go and work for someone. It's much easier, unless you want to really really yeah. stand above the rest. Like why why do it? I think you know, anyone can turn the hand to anything as long as they're willing to try enough. I don't like being in the dark with anything that I'm involved with. And yeah. if that's Facebook click funnels, if I have to read ten books or watch a thousand hours of YouTube, like I'll do it if I have yeah. to because at the end of the day it's your interest. Yeah. So every little helps. That's it. We had a guy in the office work, working with us for a month and he even said to me after whenever we went for dinner, you didn't need to sit in on the ClickBank training and I was, because I don't work on it and I was thinking, I need to sit on <laughs> on every training. I need to know every single thing that goes on. Okay, I'm never going to touch any of it, but it's very important. And I think that's probably uh, goes across the same to like if you're talking about workouts like CrossFit and all these different things. Yeah, that is the the main reason that I've tried. I mean, some of the training that I've done TRX, I'm qualified at that. Mm. I absolutely hate it, to be quite honest. But I can tell you how to do it. And yeah. I can train you how to do it. Doesn't mean that I'm interested. I did a kettlebell video on Instagram yesterday. Like, I can get someone in very good shape with kettlebells. I don't really like them. But yeah. I know how to do it. Yeah. And you've got to, again, going back to like when people... I get thousands of DMs off PTs that are just starting being like, how did you get your own gym? How did you get that many clients? I'm like, take your... Like, take what you want away from it. Like, 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Your your interest doesn't matter at that point. If someone really you're, really you're enjoys not, kettlebells, if someone's buying your time. Yeah. Give give them serve your clients like give your clients what they need and offer yeah. advice along the way. Obviously, tell them if something's wrong and yeah. totally incorrect. But at the same time, if somebody's really re- People will always adhere to what they enjoy more. Yeah. So especially in a training aspect. So if you find a way where if someone absolutely loves the TRX, mm. then train them that way if you've got the knowledge. Yes, you might not exactly enjoy it, but you're still training someone. You're still doing something you love. You're still passionate about the fitness. Yeah. And as well, you'll probably have more fun trying to like get yourself better at it. Yeah. What advice would you give to anybody of life after Love Island? <laughs> The guys that are coming out of it now, gets a lot of rap, do you know what I mean? It gets a lot of stick. I mean, I thought, obviously, I had a bit of a game plan going into Love Island for the sense of how to maximise, like, business and airtime. But at the same time, I still didn't expect the following that I got. Mm. So I think everyone coming out of that will definitely underestimate what there is coming out of the back end of it. However, just enjoy the process, enjoy the ride, in the sense of, like, that'll that'll you'll only ever experience that crazy sort of whirlwind once and i have no regrets because i enjoyed every second of it but at the same time make sure you switch on enough to put things in play rather than just instagram and social media and stuff like that because it won't last forever but there's so many good opportunities that come off the back of it like take everything and just be cautious of like be cautious of everyone but take every opportunity in the sense of like business and experiences as well like i've been so many amazing places just because of coming off the back end of that show yeah no it's brilliant yeah take advantage of it and like it looks like not well now you've got like at least five revenue streams which is great yeah. that's what they say like at five seven revenue make streams. hair while the sun shines <laughs> yeah, do and then also just we're talking to that 19 year old uh, fitness trainer that's like ah, i want to do that you know what i mean like what is the advice to them like what would you just say to them there's 19 year old me I would say definitely sometimes try and take a step back I think every little mistake or thing that happened when things weren't going right which is inevitable business is not an easy like linear path to success like it's very very hard and like there is sometimes when you're going to be down but don't take it personally try and Mm -hmm. take it almost separate yourself from the business and just think right that's what I need to do how am I going to overcome it and stuff like that but again, there's no shortcuts. Like you, j- there is times where you are just gonna have to put the work in. Yeah, I know that's it. That's gonna be the, your advice to the next stage of like skill and sculpt. Yeah, you know, yeah. those like fourteen hour, fourteen hour bread and butter days, PT, and they'll all be worth it. They'll all be <laughs> worth it. Well, that's it. Well, Adam, thank you so much for coming in. That was great. I think thank you me. probably will give a much b- bigger insight to a lot of people into like who you are and and sort of the work ethic and stuff that you have. And I'm really excited to see what happens in the future. Perfect. Thank you for having me. Brilliant, thanks.